Hello and welcome along to 21st Century Football, a podcast about football in the 21st century. We are back at Classic Football Shirts, if we sound a little bit different today. My name is Will Brazier and today we are talking about Sir Alex Ferguson. I'm joined by a man that maybe have a little bit to say about him. It's Statman Dave. Dave, how are you? I'm great. It's going to have a great time today talking about the greatest manager of all time. Um, if we don't score Fergie 90, <laughs> I'm not going to come back for the next episode. <laughs> I, I don't think I'd want to have... Not even joking. I don't want, I don't Straight don't face. Like, this is serious stuff. <laughs> but Fergie up front about... What, what is he, 76? I don't know if he'd be a good enough striker. <laughs> Fergie was a little, a little rocket up front. Horrible player to play against. Yeah. Strong, aggressive. Why not? I haven't got a time machine. Uh, he's pushing 80 though now, isn't he? So I don't know how useful he'll be. I don't know what his engine's like anymore. Adam Brown, how are you? I'm good, mate. I'm really good. I'm excited. Put on the episode today. Um, can you enjoy Fergie? Yeah, I mean, how can you not? Even as a City fan, if, you, if you're going to sit there and say you don't respect him for what he's done and appreciate him to be one of the greatest managers of all time, you're just lying to yourself. Oh, good. I'm Come glad on. you're honest. Cause Come there's, on. There's some people that maybe been on this podcast, still on this podcast, maybe <laughs> sat near to that wouldn't be that honest. Yeah, who, does, who maybe don't respect kind of one of the greatest premiership strikers yeah. of all time just because he plays for City. And it's not yeah. Neve and it's not Joe Premier McCall. League or Premiership. Oh, okay. All right. City yeah. weren't very good in the Premier League. Dave, I'll stop you okay. there. We are at Classic Football Shirt. So, speaking on that, what is the first Manchester United shirt that springs to mind when I say Fergie for you, Dave? Well, we're doing it in the 21st century. Let's, let's you get can that have what you first. want. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a little bit of free reign in this bit. I will rein you straight back in. 2007. Wow. What a shirt. Iconic. Yeah. 21st century. We've got to stick with it, right? What's that? Vodafone? Vodafone. AIG. AIG. Sorry. I don't know why we're Sorry. talking about sponsors, but yeah, cool. Um, the lovely, long sleeved, classic Ronaldo gold, shirt, that. No gold. No gold. Can't think the of thing, what you're talking about. The, the Vodafone's the one that springs to mind for me. The yeah. Van Nistelrooy kind of really era. Newcastle. Yeah, the Van Nistelrooy, um, Skulls, I think Varon, weirdly. I know that, you know, probably. You know, it yeah. wasn't an amazing kind of era, but, you know, United won loads when they, in those kits. But I just keep thinking of that Van Nistelrooy, Diego Forlan, that kind of era. Uh, that's one that springs to mind for me. Dave, seeing as it is the penultimate episode, I will give you, I will let you off the leash a bit because there's a Manchester United shirt that we've seen, but that has a bit of history and a story behind it, isn't it? <laughs> I'm lost here. The grey shirt. That's the one. The grey shirt. <laughs> Bang, we're on. I thought you'd had a couple, <laughs> of, hey! the balls. Had a couple of beers as well, haven't we? Yeah, Come really. on, the lads. Wish we had. Um, Production team, please. But yes, why is that one so unique and special? Um, well, in terms of the, the, it's Fergie, it's the one that Fergie got really riled up with in the 90s. Oh. Oh. Keep shouting about me for talking about the 90s and suggest me I'm, talking I'm about I'm giving that. you Come a on. little bit of lee, lee space. Lee space? But no, lee. Fergie, Fergie um, lee. got very frustrated. The weather wasn't great. Right. Fog. Blame the, uh, was it the 6-3 defeat to Southampton? Yeah. On, uh, on a shirt. Gr- look, Fergie was very, very He's good at pushing they, blame. Blended into the crowd as well, I think, was something that he said. Right. At the time. Did they, did they change it halfway through the game? I'm I sure thought they, they changed it Did you say Southampton's quite a grey place, Will? Uh, I did used to live in Southampton. Yes, it is quite grey, yeah. Just trying to think of many sunny times. Um... No, it is quite grey, so that would... <laughs> so he backs up Fergie's home. Yeah, no, yeah, me and Fergie sort of on the same wavelength. Didn't they go to a nice little blue number afterwards? Yeah. They're, they're still they're lost. They're, yeah, 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 it's kind of one of those things, isn't it? Um, we are speaking about Sir Alex Ferguson today, then. What is the first memory that springs to mind for you, Ad, as a Man City fan? Is um, it defeat, pain, misery? Do you know what the first memory for me? It's probably actually not anything to do with City. It's that first uh, Premier League win, that 92, 93. Really? Yeah, definitely. Um just whoa, 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 hold on a minute. Oh, hold on a all minute. Right, yeah. This is, yeah, this let, is 21st let, century. I get hammered all the time. Yeah, this man, let, the this man is me, a professional. He will come on to the let, story that intertwines yeah, with the 21st me, century. Before you shoot me down, let me. Yeah, I'm with it, mate. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I'll yeah. get you back. You got, he, you got gets, he, gets, he got a leash. You got a cameraman being twitching. He, he got a bit of leeway. I, suddenly I go 92. Whoa, yeah. hang on a minute. Expat, this lad knows what Listen, he's doing. My first memory is that. Yeah. My first memory in the 21st century. Thank you. There you go, you see, professional. Um, is probably going to be, I mean, for me, not first memory in terms of chronological order, but something that springs to mind, Champions League. Yeah. Champions League, I mean, just that team that he put together, you look back at that team now, it, un- incredible. Like, the, the, just the strength and depth they had. I mean, even compare it to what they've had since, it's absolutely you look at the strength of the bench even that night and the team how, it, how they complemented each other just it, it, I think that was probably 
for me, probably the best team that he that, that he put together. I think. Is he a bit of a granddad figure for you, Dave? <laughs> yeah, father figure, I'd say. I was pretty upset when he retired in 2013. Say so father or granddad? Father. Okay. Yeah, just to let the listeners know my age. Um, but no, he's he's a he's, a, he's, a, <laughs> he's, still quite he's old someone though, that sits that, yeah. sits quite on a on a position where in English football I don't think anyone's ever going to beat him. No. I think the longevity that that he had and the success was incredible. And I think that's something that you've got to look at Ferguson, that it isn't a Ferguson from the 90s. It's not a Ferguson from the 2000s, not from the 2010s, but it's the entirety of what he, what he did at Manchester United and how he, he kept on rebuilding. When we look at the, the records three in a row, you know, it's a big thing that Manchester United fans jive at a lump number of clubs. That is a massive thing. Winning three Premier Leagues in a row is huge. Not been done since Fergie. And we think about the quality of the Premier League now yeah. and the quality of managers in the Premier League but that hasn't been done, yep. shows how good he was at rebuilding. But And that's but, something that you've got in terms of, you have to look at things in a, in a different way because a lot of managers that we've seen from yep. the 90s to now that sit on there, that rest on their laurels, and that wasn't what Fergie did. The thing is, though, it is, it's hard because he was given the time. And all right, yeah, the argument was that he was delivering, but... He's not won the league. He's not, he wasn't winning the league every single year. He won it thirteen times. Won yeah, the Premier yeah, League. Yeah, but how many? How many years was it United? But he still won the Premier League thirteen times. But even, most successful but, ever, ever yeah, manager. I, I'm not disputing that. Right, he is. To he dispute is, is, is but, that thirteen in, in yeah. his, his entirety of his twenty six career at United was bad. That's one every two years. Yeah, that's so pretty if, incredible. If Guardiola had that many years at City, how long has Guardiola struggled to get back to the top after the Centurion year? It's taken him two years. Fergie did it the next year. It's just clean yeah, facts. It's only one year difference, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's but then what... So the previously to that, Guardiola came into the league. It took him a year to get the title first and foremost. Yeah. How many years did it take Ferguson? Yeah, but that's, we're playing a different game right now. We're playing a game where he's come with a team that's built for him. Ferguson built Manchester United in a sense in, from, from, his, from his takeover in the 80s to the 90s. To, it, he, he literally... Uh, Busby built the club in the in the fifties. Whoa, wait, well, I'll give you nineties, mate. Well, we'll not give you fifties. Yeah, I got, I got then, sold off for the nineties before. Now, the now Russian books out. Know, we have to have a look at what Fergie did. I'm not and, and you look at Liverpool, for example. Recent memory won the won the league under Jurgen Klopp. Oh, God, they were God. sitting in seventh in the league for a lot of the season. City, same thing, didn't retain the, the the Premier League. And I think that's something that you got to look at Fergie and and his methodology of how he's done it. Incredible. Do you think that that he, he has, but he did benefit from the fact that. He got the time though, because you know if you're a manager of City, maybe not Liverpool, Chelsea, whatever, you're not going to get three, four years to 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 not. You can't even if you don't win. If if, if how many years has Guardiola had? Right. Yeah, but he's won stuff. Let, let me interject here, gentlemen. This is not going to become a slangy match. We are not that sort of podcast. We are here to celebrate football, celebrate Fergie. I've let you. Add I let you had your tennis match. I know, yeah, I know, yeah. Hey. I just saw you sinking down. No, into I was, into I was, and I was enjoying it. But yeah. let's get back on track. Iconic moments for Fergie. Where do you start? Where do you even begin? Where do you even begin? That's a great point. Will. I think what what we mentioned as well about the quality in the rebuilding that was more evident as soon as he left, wasn't it? Because oh. when you look at some of them sides that won the Premier League title near the end of his career, and then you actually look at like some of the starting elevens with. What was it when Pogba left and he was left at a central midfield and it was like a midfield? Because he was a kid. No, I was like Fabio. I'm trying to support you here, Dave. <laughs> Good God, man! It was like yeah, it, Fabio and Raphael or something in midfield. But and, that shows yeah. how much of a good manager he was because he could mm. elevate the players, and that's the biggest thing is that they, the, the ceiling of players. Ferguson would always break that with O'Shea, with yeah. Wes Brown, with Darren Fletcher. There, there's so many players through the years that he massively improved in a sense and got something out of and I think that's when you look back and you don't you know you don't necessarily think about the, the big players but you think about those squad players and I think that's what it was a squad game yeah. I think Ferguson was massively ahead of his time in terms of utilizing his squad certain players would fulfill certain roles in certain games you know for example Arsenal they picked taller players they picked more physical players they picked more aggressive players mm -hmm. because they knew that they could get under Arsenal's skin and that was at a period where Arsenal were dominant yeah. This is not the Arsenal that we have today that are an absolute mockery of the, the old institution that Wenger built. This is Arsenal Football Club, second, first, Premier League titles, Champions League finals. Yep. That is the Arsenal we're talking about. And the, the battle between them both was great. But I think going back to uh, back to Ferguson and and how he evolved and how he you know moved the club on, I think that's definitely something where you've got to look at as being iconic in a sense that 
in a way that created all these moments that created 2008 yeah that created the premier league titles in you know from 2003 onwards yeah and i'd say the, the probably the most iconic thing if you've uh, i've read a number of his autobiographies all, all really good there's a moment in how the, many autobiographies he's got sorry i think i've read three i don't know how many he's got i mean great bloke not gonna knock that great career but three autobiographies you don't think you could have three well, not me. I'm going to have a chapter, but <laughs> three or five is a little bit much for me. But there's a moment where he's he's talking about the Champions League final, um, and he's he's doing the he's sat there, and this is pre-game. This is where it's like a tense environment, and I think he he looked back on '99. I think he came in it with too much intensity, and he just simply came into the dressing room, sat down, was like, "I'm happy. I've done my job." Mm. Looked around the room. It's part of G Sung from South Korea that's come over here. We've got Patrice Everett that's come from a poor background in France. We've got Wayne Rooney from Toxteth. We've got, um, you know, Carlos Tevez from, from Buenos Aires. We've got Cristiano Ronaldo from Madeira. I've done my job. Yeah. I've got you, you players here and, I've, you know, you're here right now and it's now time to enjoy it. Yeah. And I think that evolution in himself in such a high pressure moment, like we talk about high pressure moments in, in sport a lot. That's a Champions League final. You're the manager. You've got a lot of calls to make. Yeah. And and to have that as a almost calmness yeah. before the storm, it shows great about his character and his ability to motivate people. They didn't need to say anything. No. The players we, themselves had to identify that they're in this position. They've got to go and do it. We also, I've also seen recently as well, a lot of the players that were part of that era, especially later on, like Rio Ferdinand talking about like Fergie didn't do the coaching sessions, but as soon as he was on campus, it was sort of like, mafia boss you know everyone put their performance up five ten percent everyone was to attention and he had that aura around yeah, him. yeah I, I think that's a, a massive part of it just his, his presence and and like we s- said before once he retired you sort of sense that 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 presence had, had kind of gone even though he was still kind of lingering around a little bit but he wasn't the man in control and i think that it takes a kind of a a special kind of person for everyone to buy into and i think nowadays you don't really get that as much you know with with managers because it's so transient you know in terms of people coming and going but if you can get someone like that who people believe in they buy into and it, you know you, you kind of hear people talking about him and he's one of them people that he knew everyone's name at, at the, the training ground at the club it doesn't matter if you're in the first team or if you you know just work in, in a role within the club somewhere he seems to know you and seems to care about you so I think there's a a lot of that that human side of of him it, it kind of Trans, you know, people could argue, go, oh, well, just the manager's there to just pick the team and, yeah. and tactics. But I think having those extra kind of facets of his character actually made the team play better. If you know what I mean? It, it's weird to think that because it's 11 players going out on a pitch at the end of the day. But actually, them kind of buying into him as a person, uh, you know, would, I think massively benefited the team, really. He's had a few rivalries over the year. We mentioned Wenger. Um, but also, I was thinking even ones in his team, Roy Keane, David Beckham. Rude Van Nistelrooy. I was going to say that the, you know, when we were talking about motivation and mm. kind of the, the, the hairdryer treatment. Yeah, you know that was something that was banded around. Was that a, a phrase a coined by off. him? Where does coined by the players and the media? Was that because he used the hairdryer? Was that because he had hot breath? Because he went off. <laughs> Will he went really off? It, yeah. Would you use the hairdryer? He didn't go play better, and he's like going, "Mate, these people get to the top. You don't know what sort of techniques." They <laughs> yeah, use yeah, you don't want to question it. He just no. All he had to do was he, he had one in his pocket, and he'd go. Do you, you want, go, do you want this or not? Right, and then they go, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. I'll play better. But that incident with the, the boot and Beckham, kicking Whoa. the boot of ba- that's Beckham. That's prime Beckham. Allegedly. That was like prime 2000s football, that, mm. just before David Beckham left for Real Madrid. And I think that was the beauty of Ferguson. He knew when your time was up before you even it, knew your time cr- was up. And the, the players that he got rid of, like, you think of like a Van Nistelrooy or... They weren't like at the end. They weren't bad. No, no, Do you no. Know what I mean, they weren't play. They were at, say the top of the games in some but, cases. Uh, but to have the, the the courage to actually do that and actually kind of stick to your morals that that much, but then being able to rebuild is unbelievable. You think how many managers could do that? Where they take out one of the best players in the, in the team, and then it's, still it's, the, the the thing behind that is, is is even more important. Like it's football. It's a team sport. Yeah. To create a team environment, you have to do things like that. I think Ferguson's brilliance with, for example, a David Beckham when David Beckham was at a point becoming bigger than the club. Yeah. yeah. And that's a massive thing. You think about a team a team environment that you are together, push, pulling the same way. You have to have those socialist ideology about yourself because yeah. you're a team. And then even just on the fact of like the managers that, I mean, he had, 
he was pulling pants down left, right, and centre, wasn't he? Keegan, <laughs> Benitez, Wenger, multiple occasions. So many managers cracked up. Rafa Benitez was a great one. Facts. Keegan was uh, another one, but that was obviously in the nineties. Yeah, no, I let you slide. Did you want to pull him oh, up? Oh no, he's, you know, penultimate one. We were on the beach. You know, we're, we're laid back. <laughs> we're chilling. <laughs> Um, but he just seems to have that psychological battle over it. even like the new guys you know Mourinho, Mourinho. won a few but then sort of got the better of him eventually do you reckon there's anyone who really got under his skin who, who maybe took, I mean because I think he, he did get the better of Wenger or, you know the stats speak for themselves really don't they over the course of that, that period even though they did win a couple I think Mourinho did get under his skin a little bit but then it kind of turned into a, a respect thing didn't it really I suppose Right, that is it for us on YouTube. But if you want to hear the full podcast and a lot more, click the link in the description down below where you'll hear the full episodes in the fullness.